Welcome to the International School of Tailoring. My name is Reza and this is going to be your 11th lesson of our How to Make a Bespoke Jacket series. So in our previous lesson, I showed you what the correct posture is and why it's important. So before we continue with creating the canvases of our jacket and making things that have shape, I'm going to introduce you to one of the most important subjects of this entire course. It is called the law of relative length. So why is all of this so important? Well, all forms of shape stem from the law of relative length. That makes it a very vast subject. So I'm only going to give you a general overview of the law with all the subcomponents and in the upcoming lessons we're going to take a deep dive and discuss each one of the components on their own. We do this because we want to organize all these techniques correctly and don't mix them up which gives you the clarity and the proper training that you need. So this is what we're going to do. First we'll look at the general concept of relative length. Then I'll introduce you to each one of the subcomponents and then last but not least, I'll give you an example for each one. Ready? Let's go. Before we understand the concept of relative length, we have to understand something else that is as important and that is the concept of surfaces. Now, whenever we tailors work to cover a figure, we are dealing with an object and that object is made of different planes, flat planes we can call them. Whenever multiple flat planes come together, they can create complex surfaces. Now, we tailors work with three surfaces. What are those surfaces? The first one is, of course, our fabric, which is always at a flat starting point. The second surface that we work with is a surface with a positive curvature to it. So positive curve and these are surfaces that resemble cones or domes or bowls and cups what you have to know about these positive curves is that they are either concave or convex at one time so here we have a convex dome and it's now convex, but if we flip it upside down, it becomes concave. Same thing happens for the bowl and the same thing happens for the cone. How you can memorize this is that if we pour water into this bowl, we can collect water in there. If we pour water on top of this cone, the water will slip away. But if we flip it upside down, we can then simply collect water in it again. Then we have the third surface, and those are called surfaces with a negative curvature to them. And these are surfaces that look like saddles, like so. Or they look like the area between an hourglass vase this area in between and what's so weird about these surfaces is that they are convex and concave at the same time so if we use the water analogy and we pour some water on top of this saddle because it's concave in one direction and convex in the other the water will simply just drip off the sides of this saddle you might then say, well, let's try to flip it upside down. And so if we do that, like so, and we pour water again in this saddle, the water again will just drip away from the sides because it's always concave and convex at the same time, no matter how you flip it. Now, we are going to use relative length to turn a flat surface, which is basically our fabric, into a surface with either a positive curve or a negative curve. Now that you understand this, let's see what relative length has to teach us. So what is the law of relative length telling us? Well, it says that shape is created when the length of a surface 
changes relative to the length of the rest of that surface on one single layer or multiple layers. How does this look like in practice? Imagine that we have a square. The only reason why we call this a square is because the outer edges are defining it as a square. If we have a circle, we only call this a circle because the outer edges are cut like a circle. But the surface of both of these shapes is flat. If we cut out our fabric, it's just a flat piece of fabric. Now, imagine that I have this square in front of me. And I can push into this square, and by pushing into this square, I am stretching the surface of the area that I push in. So, let's say I push a little bit on this area, and I push a lot in this area. If we look at this square from the side, what you'll see is a small hill for this little fella here, and a larger hill for this big fella right here. So by pushing into the square and stretching these areas out, I have changed the length of the surface of these areas relative to the areas around them. Okay? Now, we can change the surface of our material in a variety of ways. We can do that with ironwork, we can do that with gathering the material, we can do that with darts, we can do that with relative layer length, and we can do that by joining two layers with different angles together. So, for example, if we have a square here, and we take our iron, let's say this is our iron, and we stretch out the top edge of this square, what's going to happen is we're going to end up with a square that has a ripply edge because that edge has become longer like so. We have changed the surface of this upper edge relative to the surface underneath it. If we gather material, what we can do is, for example, let's say we have one square here and we have another square. And when we are sewing this top square to the square underneath, we push in extra fabric between each stitch and by doing that, we are easing in fabric and that gathers that fabric into a condensed area and that also changes the length of the surface of that edge where the fabric is eased relative to not only the layer underneath it, but also the same layer on which that gather happened. That again creates shape. We can also do this on just one layer. Now, whenever we have a dart, for example, Let's say we have our square example again. We take out a triangular shape and cut that out. When we join the edges of our triangle together, we create something like a cone shape, like so. Again, we have changed the length of the surface in this area relative to the length of the surface in the area above it. If we do the opposite of a dart, which is the insertion of a wedge, we have a square, we make a cut in that square, and instead of taking that square, the, the triangle piece out, we open the cut and insert a triangle piece in. What that does is it creates a square with length in that edge where the wedge was introduced. Now, you can see that this is pretty similar to what happened here. So, both of these edges have extra length compared to the areas on the surface behind them. But they are not exactly the same. One just stretches the material out, the other inserts extra material in. But the effect is very similar. The change comes in the degree to which you can do that. There's only so much you can stretch the fabric, but you can really insert a large wedge into your material. Now, then we have relative layer length. That's not relative length, it's relative layer length, because we are dealing with multiple layers. So, whenever we have two squares, square number one, square number two, and we join these squares at the sides, but before we close the second side, 
we push some extra material into onto the the first square and by that we are creating a longer square on the top than the square underneath so if you look at it from the side imagine you have two layers they are sewn at one edge the second layer is not sewn flat it is sewn with a little bit more length and therefore it creates this bubble now this bubble is always going to push in that curve shape and encourage this top layer or the layer underneath to also form a curve so three-dimensionally it looks something like this it's a concave surface that is created by making the top layer longer which curls around the layer underneath it and then we have shape by angle which is basically whenever we join two panels of different angles together we create shape so here we have a circle that circle does not have the same angle as this straight strip uh, uh, of, of material so if we sew this straight strip around the circle every time we bring this around we create surplus and also create a curve shape on the surface of our rectangle now you can see that all of these methods change the surface of our material in one area relative to another area but they don't do it exactly in the same way they do however all lead to the relative length law why should we consider these as separate subunits well it's a very simple answer if we don't do it intuitively over time we will understand the differences but there will be many moments when we have to do problem solving or even pass on the technique that we're going to confuse these together so how do we confuse them here is how it happens if we bring this rectangular piece for example around this circle that creates a surplus on the inside of our seam that surplus looks very similar to a gather so you may say the reason why shape is created here is because of the gather but almost correct the real reason is that two shapes of differing angles are forced to one another and so there are going to be more cases where you're going to confuse all these techniques together so this is what i'm going to do i'm going to treat each one of these components as a separate lesson so that i can give you all the necessary details about each one as for now this is all you need to know about the law of relative length so let's summarize what we covered in today's lesson shape is created whenever the surface of a layer changes in length relative to another surface of that same or multiple layers we call this the law of relative length and relative length branches off into different subsets we have ironwork we have gathers we have relative layer length we have shape by angle and we have darts and wedges now if all of this went a little too fast don't worry we're going to cover each one of these components in a separate lesson and that should give you the opportunity to ask all the questions around the ambiguities that you have in your mind and if after that you still don't understand that i would say go back to each one of these videos and these lessons and think about them do experiments Make thinking the most pleasurable activity of your day, because after all, it is thinkers who literally shape the world. My name is Reza, this was today's lesson, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Take care. Into either a surface with a positive curve or a positive day. <laughs>